Hey guys, this is Dr. LeHue. I wanted to talk to you about um, one of the big issues that I find with couples that aren't getting along is they're not very aware of each other's needs and or how to meet those needs. And so I wanted to make a video talking about the uh, 10 needs that uh, were identified by Dr. Willer Harley in uh, His Needs, Her Needs. And I found this to be the most helpful, one of the most helpful tools in uh, helping couples understand how to share love with each other. You know, the reality is, is we're not really very good at loving. I mean, we're good at loving as long as people, you know, respond to us the way we want them to respond. But then when, uh, when times get difficult or when there's challenges, it seems like, you know, if the person isn't, if our spouse isn't responding to us the way we'd like, then, um, you know, it seems like we, we're not very good at, at demonstrating the love we've promised to demonstrate. So I think this is a really helpful tool in understanding, you know, what your spouse needs and then trying to meet those needs. Um, the, uh, the 10 um, needs that were identified by Harley are uh, affection, uh, conversational companionship, honesty and openness, financial support, family commitment, uh, sexual fulfillment, recreational companionship, physical attractiveness, domestic support, and admiration. Now, I know that's a lot when you hear them read like that, so we're gonna go back through and, and talk about each one of them a little bit and help you understand more about each one. What he found was in these 10 needs, they typically fall the first five for the wife and the second five for the husband it's not always the case I mean I've worked with a lot of couples and it just depends on you know what's lacking in that marriage um, your upbringing your background your family background as to what needs you know come to the f foremost or the you know for each of the each of the people in the relationship but let's go back through them um, the f the first five or what um, the wife typically needs the first five that he mentions are uh, number one affection and I know a husband can have this need as well. And if you're not receiving much affection in your marriage, uh, if your wife's not very affectionate and the husband, you know, may just be wired in such a way that he appreciates affection, it may be a very real need for the husband. But typically this is what uh, is acknowledged as the wife's greatest need. Affection is, is any way in which you demonstrate to your spouse your love for them. Um, usually non-sexual, um, um, ways of touch or you know holding hands putting your hand on her knee or putting your arm around her or helping her out of the car door um, any notes that you might leave or text that you might throughout the day it's just non-sexual ways of reminding your spouse how important she is to you and uh, this is typically often the wife's greatest need he hugs and kisses her many times a day creating an environment of affection that clearly and repeatedly expresses his love for her. So I'm kind of looking at my notes here as I go over this. The second need, it, uh, d typically for the wife, um, can, again, it can be for either, but the second need that is identified is conversational companionship. And this is the need to have a, a positive interaction in our conversation um, that we've set aside time every day to communicate and just to talk, not just to get through the business of the day, you know, uh, did you get the kids to school and, you know, was there problems at work? It's not just, you know, those things we have to do conversations, but the real conversations about sharing our heart and, um, you know, never being just too busy to just sit down and, and talk to one another. It should be a positive interaction. It shouldn't be judgmental. It shouldn't be racing to conclusions. Uh, let me solve your problem. But just it's the sharing of the conversation that's important is that, that we want to... Um, you know, have an interaction together that is positive for both of us. The third need that is identified um, is honesty and openness. And that, you know, should be relatively self-explanatory is that you're not living a second life, is that your spouse knows that when you say you're gonna be somewhere that you intend on being there and that um, they're not, you know, surprised to find out that, oh, all this time, you know, you've been, um, 
giving us a false impression of yourself that you're truthful about your feelings which that can be difficult because sometimes you know when we want to get along with each other we may not really be honest about whether we really want to go to the movie or really want to go to this family get together and so we may say what the other person we think wants to hear and then when we're upset or we're pouting because you know we have to go along with something um, well, you know, how were they supposed to know that we didn't want to do this because we gave every indication that that this is what we wanted to do. So honesty and openness that we don't leave the other person, our spouse or our, our uh, significant other with a false impression of, of our thoughts and feelings and intentions. The fourth need identified is the financial support. And, um, you know, this he identifies this as the wife's fourth need. But it could it could be a need for both of us uh, in the relationship is that <clears throat> all the bills are being paid, and that we're not worried, you know, that they're going to repossess our car, repossess our house, um, and you know that we know that we're relatively secure in our finances. We may not have everything we want, but but all of our basic needs are paid for, and it's great, you know, when the husband can provide that. And the wife can choose to work or choose to, you know, have a career if she would like, but isn't forced or compelled to have to have to go to work in order to be able to just pay the the monthly bills. So, um, again, you know, if the husband is going to be a stable provider for the home, he shouldn't be overworking either. Uh, so somewhere in the 40, 45 hour a week range, because you gotta be able to meet these needs in your in your family. And if you're just going to work to escape from the home or you're just going to work you know, to secure your selfish ambitions, um, you know, um, there has to be balance in your life. But well, one of the needs identified by you know, the average female or the average woman in the relationship is that she wants to be provided for. Now that's not to say that a, a wife can't go work or the, you know, the, um, the woman in the relationship can't go earn a living. Um, she may make more money than the husband and that's fine. You know, that, uh, that'd be great. But um, if that need is not met, it's usually felt more of a burden to the wife than it is to the husband. You know, the reality is a lot of husbands, they, they, you know, they feel like I could live in a van if I had to. If I had to go live in a van, I'd be fine. Uh, but I don't know a lot of wives that, you know, would think that was great. <laughs> okay, so the last need in the, in the top five for um, what's I've been identified as the wife's greatest needs are is family commitment. And this is the need she she wants her husband to care about the kids uh, you know and maybe he uh, hasn't expressed that as well as he should she wants the husband to you know go out and pitch baseball throw frisbee be at the kids sporting events and to show a genuine interest in in the family that may also relate to in-laws not just you know children but also her extended family um, she wants you to be a family man and she wants you to to have positive interactions with her family and with the the uh, the nuclear family the uh, the other five needs that have been identified and these are typically the guy's greatest needs uh, but again they can be the the wife's needs as well um, number one no surprise is sexual fulfillment um, that his wife meets his need by being a terrific sexual partner and she studies her own responses to understand what brings out the best in her and she has some confidence which of course you know if you're belittling your wife or putting her down then you can't expect her to have confidence but <clears throat> sexual fulfillment is not only the desire to uh, to be sexually fulfilled oneself but also to be a fulfillment to the other uh, other person so no surprise, that's, that's typically the guy's greatest need. And uh, it's often the one he tries to meet when he's showing love to his wife and she may or may not be really ready to respond. If you're not showing affection and conversation and all those other needs that were just identified, then don't expect you know, that your wife may be a little frustrated you know, uh, in meeting your needs. The second need identified for the man, or I guess we could say this, the, uh, what, the sixth need, the seventh need in the list is recreational companionship. And this, you know, typically often is a guy's need. Uh, it can certainly be a wife's need as well. But this is the need that we just go out and we have fun, that we go out and we have a good time, you know, that we, um, we do things together. And, you know, it can be as simple as going antique shopping or maybe the husband has an interest in cars or classic cars or motorcycles or something or, you know, whatever 
whatever you can do together and have a good time. Maybe it's hiking or camping or canoeing. Um, if you're more outdoors, you know, as a couple, it could be just, you know, a general love for movies and cinema, going to the theater and it's experiencing things together and having a good time, um, enjoying each other's company. And a lot of guys will do this with other guys. You know, they'll have golf buddies or bowling. I don't know, bowling's not so popular anymore, but they'll have bowling buddies, you know, and, and that's fine to have, you know, some friends that you go do things with. The problem is, is when your greatest recreational moments, your greatest fun is had with other people than your wife uh, or other people than your husband. So it's important that you guys find something you can do together that you enjoy with the kids or without the kids, both, that's fine. Um, but you develop an interest in each other, uh, recreational activities, and you associate your most enjoyable moments and relaxation with your spouse. The third need identified for uh, the average guy is physical attractiveness. Now, of course, not not for himself. <laughs> Although, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe he's very into that and he wants to try to make himself as physically attractive as possible. But what, what Harler, Harler, Willard Harley is saying is that the husband wants his wife to be attractive. So, um, you know, I guess that looks a lot of different ways for different people, but you know, you know, right now watching this video that there's probably some things that you could do to make yourself more attractive. Of course, the basics, you know, hygiene, um, maybe exercise, or at least, you know, thinking about your, your clothing that you're wearing for the day, maybe putting on makeup or whatever. But husbands typically want their wife to be attractive. Guys, you know, are just drawn to what they see. And, uh, so that's the third need identified for the average uh, male. Four is domestic support. Domestic support is that she creates an environment where, you know, kind of like your home is your castle. And every guy envisions that and I think thinks that's the way it's going to be when they get married. They're going to, they think, you know, I'm going to go home to this beautiful wife. She's going to be sexually responsive. She's going to be my greatest friend. We're going to do all these recreational fun things together. She's going to make, you know, my home a refuge for me away from the, the you know the difficulties of work and a way of the responsibilities and the stressors of work but the reality is in our culture you know most wives are working too and so they have their own stresses uh, that they're dealing with much less the ones at home but um, you know the typical guy will say that he wants his wife to maybe you know um, it, it could involve the traditional things like you think of cooking or cleaning and paying bills and making sure the insurance is kept up with and all those um, but the idea is that, you know, that you create a refuge in this home for one another and support each other at home uh, so that you can spend time enjoying your family. And then the last need or the fifth need for the guy, the last need mentioned is admiration. And I think of this as being, you know, every, every guy, even if he's not sports oriented, you know, kind of has this dream of being the football star, or the basketball star, and then, you know, the cheerleader over, you know, cheering him on. And this is what admiration is all about is that, you, you're cheering your spouse on that you're their greatest fan, that although the world may dump on them and think that they're terrible, that, that you know that this one person in the world has got your back, that they are supportive of you, that they believe the best about you, that they will be there for you no matter what, and they'll look you in the eyes and say, look, I know that your boss is terrible, and I know that the kids sometimes get on your nerves, but I'm here for you, I'm gonna support you, you can do this, you can make it through it. And that, that real voice of admiration, and, and honestly, guys, a lot of couples are just missing that, you know, I mean, the world can be a difficult place, work can be a difficult place, and sometimes it can seem like everybody's against you. Wouldn't it be great if there was, you were confident that your spouse would always, you know, have those admiring words for you? Um, so these qualities, you know, are the needs that we have in relationships. And you might be able to just sit there and think about, you know, identifying your own personal needs. Um, you know, what is it you need from your spouse and are you able to communicate that in a positive way to your spouse? I mean, this, this is, this is game changing stuff for relationships and marriages. Most guys are completely unaware as to what their wife even wants or their girlfriend wants. And, and, and then, you know, they just go about trying to meet their own needs in the relationship. When you can focus on meeting your spouse's needs, you know, what can happen is you guys can both, um, when your when your emphasis and your focus is on meeting each other's needs, then both of your own needs are met. And 
When your needs are met, you're going to feel loved. You are going to feel that romantic love and attraction for one another, which is often so missing in relationships, particularly after they get past the four or five year point. And uh, you want to become a student of your spouse and say, what do, I, what do they need from me and how can I meet that need? And how can I best show love for them? Not the way I need love, but, but them. And so if you could identify your spouses, your girlfriend, your boyfriends, greatest needs, like the top three, maybe three or four, and then really begin investing in trying to meet those needs. Um, and, and if your spouse was to do that for you, I mean, your marriage would look far different. Your relationship would look far different than maybe it does right now. And a lot of couples that I work with, they've never even thought about really what they need. They don't know how to put it in words. And I think one of the things that, you know, um, Harley does for us is he, in his needs, her needs, uh, and his other books. Um, he's got, uh, you know, uh, Love Busters, and um, uh, I've got several of his books on my shelf. But one of the things he does is he helps categorize our needs for us so that we're able to explain. I mean, I knew a long time ago that I had a, um, a desire for my wife to be a recreational companion, but I didn't have the words. I didn't know that that was a, you know, a real need. I, I just thought like, why can't we go have some fun? I can't, well, I'm a seven on the Enneagram. So, you know, it's part of my DNA to, uh, to wanna go do something, to wanna have an adventure, to wanna be enthusiastic, to wanna have a good time. But I didn't realize, you know, that that was really a legitimate need in a relationship. Um, but understanding this now, I'm better able to explain to my, my wife, you know, that um, um, why, why I have that uh, need in our, in our marriage. So just to review real quick, affection, conversational companionship, uh, honesty and openness, financial support and family commitment. And the top five needs for a guy is sexual fulfillment, recreational companionship, physical attractiveness, domestic support and admiration. And... You know, when we learn to meet each other's needs, um, we find ourselves much more satisfied in our marriages. And, you know, a lot of guys just need a plan. They need um, some kind of organization or structure. They may, they may feel a desire to show love to their spouse, to their wife, but not really know what to do. And, and, and often acting from their own needs, they, they're completely unaware of so what their wife is needing or wanting. What, what this does is it gives you a plan. It says, okay, identify first of all my spouse's greatest needs. I'm not gonna focus all my attention on the things that she doesn't need. I'm not gonna put the coins I have in the banks that she doesn't care about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on, you know, if she's identified her greatest needs are affection and conversation and, you know, recreational companionship. If those are her three greatest needs, then that's where I'm going to focus my attention. That's where I'm going to invest my time and my energy. And what you see is really immediately, if you'll just do this without um, worrying about are you being taken care of, you'll just focus on taking care of your spouse. If you'll do this with some energy, with some passion, with some enthusiasm, you'll begin to see some major changes happen in your relationship. I've seen it happen in my own. I've seen it happen in multiple uh, count, uh, couples that I've counseled. And uh, I would highly encourage you to to begin the process today. Maybe you go on Amazon and order His Needs, Her Needs. Um, you can watch uh, videos on YouTube uh, from Willard Harley on His Needs, Her Needs. But I would, I would encourage you to begin the discussion and the conversation today with your spouse. All right, guys, that's all, the t all we got time for today. And uh, like always, I wish you the best. And um, you know, be there for one another and take care of each other. All right, 